and welcome to Art Corner with me, Miss Molly. Today we will be tackling the art of baking using the complete baking book for young chefs from the American Test Kitchen. This is a fabulous book. If you are new to baking and don't know where to start, this book is for you. And even if you've been baking for years, there are tons of tips and tricks that you've probably not heard of. So this is a great resource for anyone who wants to get started in baking. It breaks down all the terms you're going to use. It has every recipe by level of difficulty and time. If you want a quick snack, there are certain recipes to choose versus things that might take hours and hours. I learned so much flipping through this one. And another cool thing about this book is that it's a test kitchen. So the writers actually sent recipes to students all over the country and they all wrote back their feedback. Every recipe has little quotes um, from children who have tested these recipes at home. There's also fun facts on almost every recipe, uh, which I think is super fun. And it goes over the four key tricks to baking. Number one, always read carefully. Baking is a science, which means everything has to do with a chemical reaction. It's really important that you have the right ingredients and the right amount of it. Number two, stay focused. Make sure that you measure carefully. Like I said, these are like chemical reactions. It's really important to have the right amount of the right ingredient. Also, a good chef uses their senses in the kitchen. Can you smell something when it's burning or maybe right before it's burning? Can you hear something sizzling? Number three, practice safety. Um, we're going to be using oven mitts because there's a lot of hot surfaces. We're going to be using ovens. So please make sure that if you don't have a grown up that you're at least practicing the most safety, safety first. And number four, mistakes are okay. You don't need to stress out if something doesn't add up or if something doesn't end up like the way you thought it would. Most of the time, mistakes are delicious, even if they look a little lumpy. I actually made two batches of the cookies we're about to make today. The first one came out perfect. It looked just like the picture, and my roommates were very impressed. They all ate them up immediately. But I realized I wasn't filming, so I had to make it again. The second batch were not as beautiful, but just as tasty. Don't get hard on yourself. This is all about practice, practice, practice. This book has tons of recipes from cakes to cookies to breads and pizzas. And if you like cooking, this is an awesome book for you. Now let's get started. Before you bake, make sure that your hands are nice and clean. Wow. If you have long hair, please tie it behind. And number three, if you have an apron, put it on and protect your clothes. This might get messy. Let's go. Set oven to 350 degrees. The first thing you need is a medium bowl. We're gonna mix together our dry ingredients. Add in your half a cup of flour, your quarter cup of cocoa powder, your half a teaspoon of baking powder. This is very important. Do not get your baking powder and baking soda confused. Make sure you read the labels. Next, 1 8 teaspoon of baking soda. And here is our quarter teaspoon of salt. This just balances out the sweetness, I think. Whisk it all together until combined. Now 
Next, get out your big bowl. This is gonna be for our wet ingredients. First, one whole egg. And then we're going to remove the yolk from the second egg. So find a small dish and you can just use your hands to scoop out of the scoop out the yolk carefully. This part is kind of gross and the eggs feel like boogers, so just be warned. Once you have your yolk, plop it in. Now, it's bad to have yucky raw eggs on your hands, so go wash your hands. Okay. Here we're going to add our half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And our brown sugar packed. That just means you shoved it really good into the mixing cup. Next we're going to mix with our whisk until combined. I should see no sugar left. Next, we're going to melt our chocolate. I use chocolate chips and I put them in a microwave safe bowl with some butter and melted them up and stirred them until there was no lumps. Then we're going to add this hot mixture with our liquid ingredients. Make sure you have an oven mitt or a towel. The bowl will be hot. It's okay to ask for help for this part. If you don't have chocolate chips, you can get a chocolate bar and smash it up with a rolling pin and a plastic Ziploc bag. That is why the recipe called for those things. But if you already have chocolate chips, you don't need to smash them anymore to melt. When you melt chocolate chips in the microwave, do it for short intervals, 30 seconds at a time, and then stir. Then we're going to stir, stir, stir our chocolate in with our eggs and our sugar. And then we're going to add in our dry mixture. This is why we used the large bowl for this one. There was a lot of stirring, so I fast forwarded it. Chill in the fridge for at least 10 minutes. We want to be able to roll this into a ball. And if it's too gooey, it's going to be hard. Now, it says parchment paper to put on your baking sheet, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> I lost mine somehow. So I just sprayed it with some cooking spray. This is a good alternative if you don't have parchment paper. Put your powdered sugar and your granulated sugar into two small dishes. You're going to take about two tablespoons worth of your dough and roll it in your hands to make a small ball like that. Roll your ball in the granulated sugar first, make sure it's coated, and then put it in the powdered sugar. Next, put it on your baking sheet. Putting the dough in the granulated sugar and then the powdered sugar gives it that crackle look at the end. These are also called earthquake cookies because of all the fractures at the end. Pretty cool. This is a really fun part and really sticky and messy. Now it might be tempting to lick the spoon, but remember this has raw egg and raw flour. Both, the, both of those things don't make our tummy feel good. Bake until surface puffs and cracks for about 11 minutes. Ta-da! I actually made two batches of these cookies. The first batch was beautiful and looked just like the picture. This batch, not as much, but it's okay. Sometimes mistakes are just as delicious as perfection. <laughs>